the material I prepared might be pretty difficult because it's supposed to be for very experienced tournament players, but uh, I hope you guys will still enjoy it. Um, the first position I'll show you is um, illustrate an example of how to how to try to win a pawn ending if you know the basics of what you need to do. Here white has two against one, and of course the pawns are blocked. The question is, can white somehow create a pass pawn that he's going to nurse all the way to queening? And it's not so easy, because if he goes, it seems like right now black has the opposition. Black is opposing the white king. And how to break through? It's like, in theory, it seems like if white goes here, black might go here. Black, it, looks like, it looks like they can just dance. But you will notice that it's not so simple at all. Um, the correct move is king to e5, even though it looks, in my opinion, it looks a little paradoxical. Why are you going away from your pawns? Well, the idea is to try to get to a position where you have the same opposition, but, you, but black is on the move. In other words, like you gain the opposition. Right now, it's white on the move. So I will show you how it's done. First, we have to avoid temptation. The first tempting thing is to play c6 jack. That looks really like a great move here. Because one would think if pawn takes, king c5 looks like an awesome move. And now if black goes, let's say, king c8, we take the pawn. If the king goes here, we push the pawn to b7. You have to come out, and I come in, and I'm queening very, very easily. So alternatively, in this position, after c6 check, um, you go king c8, but wait, let's analyze this one first. Pawn takes king c5. If you go king to d8, that's a very mysterious move. The idea now, after king takes c6, that will be a mistake, because black immediately gets the opposition. And now, after b7 check, king b8, the only way to protect the pawn is here, and we have a stalemate. So, a draw. However, I should only... I should say this here, here. White will play king d6. And now black is in a bind. Because if he goes right, the pawn just queens. If he goes left, then again, I get the opposition. And the point of getting the opposition is when the king goes here and I push the pawn, you must go out. And then the king supports his pawn. Next move, I queen. So now we understand. This is what white idea could be. But black could be much smarter that after c6 check, he's going to play king c8. He does not take the pawn. He basically does this. And now we have a beautiful situation. What can happen? Of course, if pawn takes pawn, that's nothing. I just do this. The king will protect the pawn. I'm going to wait for the king with the opposition. When the king shows itself, again, eventually, we will have a stalemate. So. Then you might say, wait, Aviv, why don't you just push the pawn? The problem here is that you cannot get the king out of the box. He's just going to go. He's basically going to play king c8, king d7. You cannot stop it. Because the moment you try to stop it, stalemate. The king will have no moves at all. So and there's no way for white to stop this dance of king c8, king d7. So that would be a draw. In this position, of course, we have a draw. Also, you will notice that after king c8, if you play king d6, OK? We know now if pawn takes on c6, that's going to be a problem. So you move the king. Because pawn takes c6, king takes c6, white has the opposition. And again, white is in the same problem. That he has the same issue that he had before. If he pushes the pawn, I just go back and either stalemate or perpetual dance with the king. If you play pawn takes and I take, that doesn't win anymore. And of course, after king d7, now I take, and we know that when you take back, king c8, opposition, and draw. b7, king b8, king b6, stalemate. So very, very tempting continuation to play c6 check, but it doesn't work. Now watch what happened when white gives black, when white manages to lose a tempo, basically. He does king e5, and black has several moves, but he can no longer keep the opposition. If he tries to be opposing, then c6, and the pawn just marches in. Whether you take it or let me take you, either I take on b7, or if you take, I push b7, you cannot stop the pawn. Therefore, you, you must play king c6. 
And now White goes back to defend his pawn. No way he can afford to lose the pawn, obviously. And now Black is going to go King d7. If he tries to go out, that doesn't help either because I'm just going to go here. And of course, I'm winning easily. I'm just going to go King d7, King, King d6, King c7. And I'm going to take this pawn and Queen this pawn. It's easy. So he must play King d7. And now King d5. What happened? We have the exact same position we had in the beginning. But rather than be white to move and he went king e5, now it's black to move. And whenever black goes, he loses. Of course, if he goes away from the pawn, like to the e-file, I'm just going to play c6 and queen my pawn without effort. So he's going to try to run with his king. And now, king e6, diagonal opposition. Notice that there's a position, but in diagonal. Again, notice that white is very smart not to play king d6, because if he goes king d6, black is going to play king d8. That is not helping one bit. So king e6, and now black has two choices. Here or b8, it's the same, you'll see. Because here white plays king d6, again he's opposing. King c8, again he is not falling into the trap of playing c6, because black is just going to go king b8. Very, very smart. And again we know pushing the pawn, the king is going to be dancing forever. If you take, it's nothing. And therefore, White plays king e7. He just edges the king to the corner. Black has one move. And white keeps pushing. And now the poor king is in the corner. Now that the king is stuck in the corner, now we can play the move c6. And now this move wins. Now why does it win? If you take the pawn, then of course I'm just going to play king c7. My pawn is ready to queen. You can push this pawn, let's say, and then check, check, and mate. Very easy, I just queen and win. So alternatively, you might say, well, Aviv, instead of taking, what if you just bring your king back here? Well, now the problem is that after c7 and mate. It's amazing how much life there is in an ending with only three pawns, two for white and one for black. Again, a position that looks so innocent and it has like a world of ideas. But if you understand a position like this, if you understand what I explained to you, then you're already doing very well. You have to understand when is it a win, when is it a draw. It's very easy to make a mistake in an ending like this. Any question about this ending? Okay, then on we go to the next position. The next position is again, it's a beautiful example of how to win a position, how to solve a problem in the position. Let me put it this way. Right now it looks like white is just losing. Completely losing. While he can make a queen, first, he is down a bishop. And you can already see that if you play, let's say, a queen, I'm going to go bishop to f5. Check a beautiful skewer of the king and the queen. When you move your king anywhere, I'm just going to take your queen. Notice that the bishop, ironically, is defending his pawn. If you take that bishop, then I'm just going to march my pawn, make a new queen. Of course, this is winning simply. And any other move, if you don't take the bishop, let's say you play whatever, I don't know. If you play here, I'm just going to get my king closer and closer and closer until eventually I'm just going to help push the pawn with the bishop and make a new queen. So what is white to do then? Can he even save the game? And the answer is yes. The trick is to try to use your king to do two things at the same time. And the win is really beautiful. It's really something that it's worth of you to, you, you're really going to enjoy. The first move is the most ridiculous move on the probably the last move you want to think about. King to c8. Incredible. What, what kind of a move is that, you ask yourself? Not only are you blocking your own pawn from queening, but you're encouraging the opponent's pawn to just move forward and, and win the game. But no. So black, of course, is playing b5, the most logical move that there is. And now white does a switchback. King to d7, a beautiful return. Now he is threatening to queen the pawn. Why? Because let's pretend that you play some move. Let's just pretend. I make a queen. You will play check to win the queen or else. I'm going to go here. And by the time you take the queen, I'm going to take your last pawn. And the draw is evident. So in this position, after I go king d7, black needs to push his pawn b4, further. Now, again, it looks really gloomy for white. He cannot stop the pawn, right? I mean, not even with the chopper. 
The pawn is so far advanced, you can't stop it. And if you queen, I always have check, and I'm going to win your queen. And I have a pawn to, to queen my own queen. But white plays king to d6. A brilliancy. Well, now I'm threatening to queen my pawn. So if you push your pawn and I queen, well, black will lose. So he must play bishop to f5. And white plays king e5, attacking the bishop. Now, if the pawn advances, we take the bishop. If the pawn advances, we queen. That's going to be a draw. Each side is going to queen, and that's going to be queen versus queen, and a draw because in an open position, queen versus queen is not winning. And it's inside the square. Yeah, well, I'm about to get into inside the square, exactly. If you try to move your bishop and save, save the queening, then, of course, the king goes somehow, and mysteriously, the king that's somewhere in Honolulu is all of a sudden right next to the pawn, and the pawn is not queening anymore. There's no way for black to save his pawn anymore. So again, from the, from the top, again, I think it's one of the most brilliant endings that I've ever seen. I've seen it many years ago. I remember as, as a relative beginner, I was just in awe. It was just impressive to see how to do it. Again, queening doesn't work. Any king move just doesn't work because black is going to play bishop f5, put the bishop on c8. So all of a sudden, king c8. Just aiming to take the pawn. And you cannot just defend the pawn with the bishop because I'm just going to slide my king here, threatening to queen the pawn, and then black will have to go back with his bishop and make a draw immediately. So the pawn pushes. Things look even worse for white. But after king d7, b4, and now he starts with king d6. A brilliant move. Threatening to queen. The only way to stop it is this. Attacking the bishop. And now black has two choices. Either allow the king to get into the box and stop his pawn, or give up his bishop and allow a queen. So, draw. Understood? Cool. Our next example is again uh, the, beauty, the beauty of chess composition, I think. Look at this position. It's really, really interesting. It's obvious that while black is up a knight in our position, this pawn is too much for it. He's going to have to somehow sacrifice his knight for the pawn. But now the question is, from white's point of view, should we bring the king here, after which black will have to take the, knight with the, the pawn with the knight? Or alternatively, should we push the pawn, and then of course the knight will be obligated to play check and sacrifice itself here? And you might say, well, what is the difference? Why is it even different? There is a difference. There is a huge difference, and I will explain. Well, actually, the, the solution of the game will be the best way to explain. Also, will save time. No, well, the difference is where the, the square that the king takes the knight on. Exactly. And why, the, and why of course, right? Uh, okay. It looks like, what is the difference if the king is, for, for all means of purposes, all the business is here, right? What is it going to matter if the king is here and here? Right now, it looks so elusive, right? Like if I gave you 10 minutes, believe me, you will look at it and you think, I don't understand. What is the difference? But the, it's a beautiful hard composition, and let me show. 8-7, the correct move. Check. King here. You must sacrifice. And I take back. And now I'm good and ready to play the move C5 and queen my b-pawn. So you must go away as much as possible. And now white plays C5. Soon we will see. Still, for now, we don't understand what is the difference if the king is here or here. You don't see a difference, but there is a huge difference. Look at it. So takes, b6, c4, b7, c3, oh, I make a queen, c2. Now, when I can tell you that the queen against a pawn on the, either the bishop file or the rook file, when they get to the seventh rank, especially when the king is far away, is for the most part a draw. In other words, if right now the black king would have been here, this is a draw. You cannot win. Why? King well, the the, not only that, but you can somehow force the win of my pawn, but then my king is going to go to the corner. Let's use our imagination. Imagine when the king is in the corner and the white queen takes this pawn, what is it going to be? Oh. Stalemate. So that's, that's the difference. I'll never have to block my pawn. I can just afford to give it to you because whenever you'll take here and my king is in the corner, it'll be a stalemate. So, in this position, it's winning still, because white has a brilliant resource. Look at that. Queen h2, a fantastic move. He is attacking the pawn on c2, 
And now black has two choices. He can either queen the pawn, or he can try to support the pawn with the king. If you support the pawn with the king, then my queen just comes to f4, not letting you queen anymore. Next move, I'm going to play queen c1, and then I'm going to bring my king. Once the queen blocks the pawn and will never move, this king can be somewhere in Iowa, and it's going to still come back in time because it's easy. But the big question is, wait a minute, why, can you, why not just queen the pawn? Well, because queen h6 check, skewering the king and the queen. And now we understand why the king has to be on h7 and not on h6. If the king was on h6 right now, let me go back one move. If the queen or king was on h6 right now, there'll be no win. You will not be able to square the, skewer the king and the queen. Really beautiful, right? Very hard, I know. This is really, I show it sometimes to my students who are 2200 and they have to take a long time before they understand. They have to really go through mega calculations to understand it. Some people, of course, see it immediately. Like if you show it to a grandmaster, probably he will understand why do you need this dagger? Why does the queen have to be on h6? If it's not the king, then it's the queen that has to be on h6 and that is the answer. Understood, guys? And lady? Yep. Okay. Another brilliant ending that I'm going to show you from the world of composition is composed by two players, two composers, Gurganidze and Afek. Afek is a good friend of mine. I've shown examples of his before. This is a brilliant example of, again, in minimalistic terms. This is black to move, and white still makes a draw. White is down a rook, but somehow, and with his king, look how far his king is from his pawns. And yet, because it's double pawns, there are two pawns, he manages to make a draw. Well, right now, white is threatening to make a new queen. And black can't very well d do this because the pawn will take it. And therefore, he needs to find a solution of how to stop the pawns. He needs to give a check. And now the white king starts stepping closer to the pawns. And he comes further. And now the king starts marching. You will already see that if the rook tries to take the pawns, he can take just one of them. King here, rook takes, king here. Now it is the black king who is far away from the arena, and I'm just going to attack the rook either from here or here, push the pawn, attack it further, and the rook will have to eventually sacrifice itself for the pawn. Right? For example, let's say king here, king here. Let's say the rook, I don't know, goes somewhere. I'm just going to threaten to queen, and you can come here, and I'm going to threaten to queen, and that is immediately a draw. If you check me, I go down. If you check me, I go up, and otherwise I just make a new queen. So, that I think is pretty understandable. Therefore, black is trying to bring his king closer, and so is white, and they keep running and running. And now, it looks really gloomy again for, for white. It looks like he's about to lose his pawns. But, king f7, getting ready to queen. Of course, black plays rook to d7 check. Again, when you look at the position, you think white is just losing. The king made it all the way to h6. The rook is attacking the king with a check, and both pawns are dead, but they're not that dead. Look at this, again, paradoxical move. King to g8. Amazing, just fantastic. Rook takes g7 check. The other alternative would have been to take this pawn. Then I just put the king on h8, threatening to queen. And when you take the pawn, stalemate. So after this. Rook takes pawn with check, and the king goes to the corner. And again, it's amazing. It's black on the move, and he cannot avoid stalemate. If king takes pawn, it's stalemate. If the king goes away from the rook, you're going to lose the rook. And on any rook move, I'm just going to go g7 one more time, threatening to queen the pawn. And when you take it, it's stalemate. A brilliant composition. Again. With so little forces, white manages, and against the whole rook, white manages to force the draw. Again, an example of the clumsiness of, of rooks sometimes. Understood, guys and girl? Yep. Okay. Next position. Actually, I'm going to jump a little bit ahead to this position. And some of you might say, by now, some of you might say, you know, Aviv, this is really brilliant, but is it really practical? Is it just the art of chess, the beauty of chess, or does this really happen in games? Well, I don't have to far. I, I don't have to go far to show you how this can, how composition can apply in games. Let's start with this position. 
a beautiful composition by, by Hooker, who says why to move and win. And at first you look at the position, you just say that's impossible. Yeah, sure, the black king cannot stop the pawn, but you have a bishop on the diagonal. All I need to do is just push this pawn here, clear the diagonal for the bishop. The bishop will not let the pawn advance. And then my king is 10 times closer than the white king to just go and hunt that pawn. Looks like a draw, right? No. The answer is no. Now, of course, if you push h7, then I will play e4. Now it's really not winning. So white is to be a little more smart and patient than that. And watch what he does. Step one, he realizes if he got rid of this bishop from this diagonal, then his pawn is going to cruise to the queening square undisturbed. So bishop a7. Okay, all of a sudden chess base is like not reacting. Let's see why. Okay, it's behaving again. And now we understand. I'm threatening to play bishop takes pawn. I mean bishop takes bishop and then just queen my pawn. Or just push the pawn. So let's say if the king harasses my pawn, I'm just going to... And I'm queening it. The moment you try to stop it, you lose your bishop. And I'm winning easily as white. So that's out of the question. But what to do? After bishop a7, what can you do? You have to leave your bishop on this diagonal somehow. And you see that bishop c3 is, the, is pretty much the same as in the game. Let's pretend you go to the corner. Now I attack your bishop. Same point as before. Now I'm ready to just push my pawn and queen. So if the king chases my pawn, I'm just going to run and queen. The moment you play e4, I'm just going to take your bishop and eliminate it. So you've got to play here, king here, bishop a1, the only move on the diagonal. And now this brilliant move by white. Watch this amazing move here. Because if you keep chasing the bishop, the bishop is going to run away from you. If you play h7, he's going to play e4 and open the saving diagonal for the bishop. So what does white do? Bishop d4. Fantastic. What is the point? If pawn takes, then the king goes to d3, closing the gate. Now the bishop is begging to get out of jail, but he can't. And therefore, my pawn is just going to queen. And alternatively, if you take with the bishop, then I go king d3 attacking the bishop. So again, it's not easy for black to play a move like this because he is just going to lose his bishop. And now, if you play bishop on the diagonal to save it, king e4, closing again the door on the bishop, and the pawn is unstoppable. I'm just going to march the pawn without stopping. Beautiful, right? A beautiful composition. And again, it looks like something, oh my god, that can never happen in a game. Well, it happened in my game. An element like this happened in my game. Let me show you how. This is the next example. I'm playing against a player in a real game. Well, I, was, I can tell you that I was winning and losing in this game. It was a funny, funny game. In this position, my opponent is up a bishop. But the last move was bishop from d1 to a4 was a terrible blunder. All the opponent had to do with the bishop on d1, it just go king b5 and I'm, I have to give up this pawn and black would just win easily. But instead, one careless move. And now watch the idea. I played h5. All of a sudden, my pawn is unstoppable. So, two choices. One is to play take, and one is to try to play check. If my opponent would have played check, like this, then guess what? I'm not taking the pawn, because then this bishop is coming to the long diagonal, right? He's going to stop my pawn. No. I'm going to go king c3, just like we saw in the previous example. I'm not letting the bishop get to the diagonal. So annoying. So my opponent understood that, and he played pawn takes on h5. And now, I play g6, and now e5. If my opponent would have played bishop to b3, with the idea of playing e5 check and opening the diagonal for the bishop, you might already guess that all I would have done is close the gate, just like we saw in the previous example. So theory and practice, you see, the composition can happen in a real game. So what happened in our game? After g6, my opponent played e5 check, hoping that maybe I will take the pawn and then can fight on, but I just went king back, no bishop, you're not allowed to go on this diagonal. How poor this bishop is, he cannot enter this diagonal. So my opponent desperately took the pawn, I played g7, of course I made a queen and won the game without any effort. The queen just took all the pawns. So as you can see, this can happen in a real game. Okay, 
Now, our next examples, um, I want to show you a beautiful position that I showed one of my students here in a private lesson. Again, it's a composition that teaches you how, to, with even very few pieces, there can be a world of thinking. My, my student had a really hard time with this, but of course I didn't give, give him much time to solve it either. So we look at a position, and it's queen and two pawns versus queen and pawn. The natural instinct is to think of the next move. How to win? You already think of a plan. Where should I put my queen, or what should I do? But before you do that, you'll be much better off to think about, OK, in words, what do you need to do? Right now, you realize that the blacking is a bit boxed in. He's a bit stuck. He's not like roaming free in the middle of the board, where he has freedom. He has very limited mobility. He cannot go here. He cannot go here. He cannot go here. He cannot go here. He only has one legal move out of all, all the moves that he has. Secondly, if the black queen gets free, it's going to drive this king nuts. It's going to give checks, a million checks. And in an open board, how is the poor white king going to hide? Right? He's not going to be able to hide. So now, also, we notice that our queen is vacationing somewhere far away and much further than the arena. The arena is here. And we need to bring it into the game. How can we do it? Notice that we can get to this position. Now, if I try to play this move, the, the computer will not let me. It's illegal, right? Look, I'm playing queen b1 to e5, and the computer whistles and sends the queen back. But I can do it in a legal way. Watch. Step one, queen b5 check. Only one move for black. He has to block with his queen. Now, I don't want to give a check on this square, because if I checked here, the king is going to roam free. And now next move is either going to go here or here and try to take my pawns. That is not a way to win with white. That's terrible. That you white can only lose that kind of way. So the proper move is queen e2 check. Again, leaving black with only one move to make. He has to block. And then queen e5 check. So if you noticed, it's like I played queen from b1 to e5 without losing any time, and my king was never in danger. Of course, black must play the move queen g5. So we have reached the first part of the game. The queen got closer. But now you might say, OK, but how to win? The first instinct is to play the move f4. Because you think, hey, not only am I defending my queen, but I'm also attacking the queen. But the problem is that after takes, takes, king g5, oopsie, the pawn is being caught. And then there is a rook pawn. And that is not winning. That is an easy draw. After, let's say, here, I go here. And then I just take this. Maybe you can somehow go take my pawn. But I'm going to be in time to take this pawn, then run to the corner. This is not a win for white. So what to do instead, if you can't play f4? Again, you have to think yourself. You have to, to think in a logical way. Don't just look for a move. Because you know how many moves the queen has in this position? Just imagine, on this diagonal, on this diagonal, on the file, on the rank, a million moves. So by brute force, it's going to take you a lot of energy. You have to ask yourself in words, how do I make a move that gives my opponent a hard time? First of all, I got to prevent the checks. I can't go too far from the queen with the queen, or else he's going to check me here, or here, or here, or here. And then we know that once the, black, the white king gets checked forever, it's going to be very hard to win. So watch what white does. He plays a beautiful move that stops all the checks and gives, gives him a chance to get even closer to the black king. Watch what he does. Queen e6. Brilliant. Now black doesn't have this check, and he doesn't have this check, and he doesn't have this check, and he also does not have this check. He also doesn't have pawn here, because I just take it with check. Then, when I trade queens, this is an easy win. I have two, two extra pawns. I'm just going to go with my king here, and by the time you take one, I'm going to run with the other. Easy win. So you can't sacrifice the pawn. So you have to move your queen. But where? You can't move your queen like anywhere, because that's going to be checkmate. Your king is boxed in. So you have to be in touch with the checkmates. If you try to remain on the file here, then guess what? This is mate. So you have to play on the G file, but where to? Here you will lose it, obviously. And here you will lose it. Here you will lose it. Here it's mate. If you go here, my pawns can take you. And if you go all the way to G1, then at the very minimum, I'm going to play check, check, and bye-bye queen. So black has basically one move in this position to prolong the game. That is queen G2.
Now, of course, if you play check, the king goes out, check, the king can defend the queen. So, how to win? Now, that comes, now comes the hard part, but it's really beautiful. I think you love it. Queen f5, the queen gets as close as possible to the king. Queen g5, again, the only move. It's brilliant to think how the queen went to b1 all the way to f5. Well, black did nothing. Now, I don't want to give a check here. Why? Because the king is going to come out without any consequences. Watch what I'm going to do. First, I'll play this check. Only move is to block. Now, I'm going to play queen f7 check. And the poor king has to go here. White plays f4 check. Okay, it's stuck for a second. Hopefully, it'll... One moment, it'll show it. The pawn goes to f4 with check. How many legal moves does black has? Only one. The king has no legal moves. And the, king, the queen has to take. And now that the queen took away the last escapes from the king, mate. Forced win for white. Very difficult, but brilliant. Really a brilliant way to dominate with the queen. First, we got the queen closer. Then we made sure that the king was still boxed in. And at the right time, we let it out because it had very few moves and we checkmated it. Do we understand that? Cool. All right, let me see where I am. Oh, this is another beautiful position that I'm going to show you. And probably it's going to be our last position for the day. And again, we know that a rook against bishop for the most part is a draw. Why? Because black needs to run to the corner opposite to the color of the bishop. Imagine if this king was here on a8, and then the bishop would be on one of the squares next to it, and there is no way to win. You can, any check is going to be just blocked with the bishop, and you can never keep it because it's going to be stalemate. So very, very nice. However, if the king is closer to the other square, the, the other uh, corner, the same color of the bishop, then it's winning. Now, the pawn here is not very relevant because you can't queen the pawn. But how to win? White plays g7. He just gives away his pawn. And what is the point? The point is if the bishop takes king g6, notice the mating pattern. The king is opposite one another and the rook is ready to deliver checkmate. And now it's a big problem. If the bishop just, let's say, goes somewhere here, now he took away the, the square, but we can play here. Attacking the bishop, threatening mate, the bishop can go here, check, the bishop can block. But notice that here, white still has a move. If this would have been king here and bishop here, then black would be safe. But now white just plays a move, just a waiting move. The king has to let go of the bishop and checkmate. No defense. What to do then? How can, def how can you defend after this move? King h7, a brilliant move. Now you're saying, okay, maybe now I can take, at some point I can take the pawn. But notice that white just keeps the black king boxed in. He plays rook f7. Very, very smart move. A brilliant move. Why? The idea is that sooner or later that pawn is going to go. It's going to be king and rook versus king and bishop. And with the rook being here, the king is not going to be able to run to the square opposite to the color of the bishop. Watch how it's done. Now he plays rook f7, he plays bishop some move. It's the same thing if he would have taken the pawn. Had he taken the pawn, oops, sorry. Of course, I'm not going to give the bishop, the rook for the bishop. I just play a waiting move with my king. You're going to play a move like this, and then my king comes here. We have a very similar position to the game, you'll see. So, rook f7, bishop d4. And now, how to win with white? The king can't can do anything. I mean, at the right time, if you go away with the king, then the bishop will take the pawn without any danger. And the king will just run away. So what do you do? You give away the, the pawn. The only way to win, the only practical way to win. Of course, he must take the queen. And now, king g6. Now we understand the idea of putting the rook on f7. If the rook would have been anywhere else, the king would start his journey to the correct corner of the board. Now he has a problem. So he's got to play a move with the bishop. Of course, this doesn't look very appetizing. It's mate. 
So now what to do with the bishop? Let's say we play bishop to g1. The bishop is hiding as far as possible. And now the win is by keeping, just keep chasing the bishop until you combine an attack on the bishop with a threat. So for starter, we go here, bishop h2. Now rook h1 is also winning, but let's say rook f2, here and here. Now the bishop can long, no longer come here or here. He has to roam to the free board. Now, if you play bishop h4, then check, and the bishop is gone bye-bye, winning. So black is going to try to play the move bishop to d6, rook d2. We keep attacking the bishop. Now if the bishop goes anywhere, rook to d8 is going to win, so he's going to try to prevent it. And we are going to play rook to c2. Beautiful. Because but the bishop now took away the escape square for the king. In any other square, the king would just run here. But now if you do that, I'm just going to play check. And you can see that even other move with the bishop would not save the game. If you would have played, let's say, bishop to e5, then I'm sure everybody can see rook e2 attacking the bishop and the square e8 behind it. We have already seen if bishop d6, all we got to do is check, play a little waiting move, and when the king moves, we take the bishop. The only way to win is to give up the extra material. Okay, guys, I hope that you picked up a lot from this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you much for, very much for attending.